Now, for many of you with school-aged children, this week is half term. So today we're putting the spotlight on children's mental health. Take a look at our studio audience today. Now imagine everyone in our audience is a child. Now imagine they're all gone. Those empty seats represent just some of the children who take their own life each year. Now, we have around 80 seats here. That's not even half of the more than 200 school children who kill themselves annually in the UK. It is unimaginable to think of losing your child to suicide, and with statistics showing that at least three children in each class have a diagnosable mental health issue, it's time to get the conversation started. This is part of our award-winning Lighten the Load campaign and is supported by the children's mental health charity, Young Minds. Joining us now is Nadia's 16-year-old daughter, Maddie. <laughs> now, Maddie, you have grown up in a house where mental health is talked about. Yeah. Is this something that you're thankful for? Definitely, yeah. I mean, to me, it feels normal because I've grown up with it. Mm. But when I'm around friends and they say how they're not really open with their family about their mental health issues yeah. or anything. That's when I realised that it's really different that I talk to my family so openly about it. But I definitely think it's a good thing. How old were you when you first kind of realised that, that maybe your, the way that your family operates is different to others? I think I was probably about 13, 12. Yeah, when I was around people, a lot of my friends had mental health issues and they told me that when, I, when, I, when they realised how open my family was about it, they were like, that's really weird, like, my family's not like that at all. And when they say really weird, do they mean yeah. that in, a, in a good way? You know, from a teenager's point of view, from a parent's point of view, we're always panicking that we're getting it wrong. But mm. from a teenager's point of view, is it, is it helpful to have mental health so openly talked about? It, I think it, it's, it's complicated because sometimes it is. My, some of my friends wish that their parents were more open about yeah. it. Yeah. But um, when my friends' parents are open about it, they find it really awkward to talk about this. We can't win as parents. <laughs> Do you think uh, we can? Not really. <laughs> Do you find that your friends come to you then because they know that you live in that kind of environment and you, you have a bit of experience? Yeah, well, definitely at one point, I think when I was about 13, 14, all my friends were coming to me a lot for advice. And I love helping people. I love giving advice and everything. But, you know, sometimes I think it's quite hard for somebody going mm. through stuff as well mm. to try and help other people. Um, it can be overwhelming. Yeah. It can be draining. Yeah, yeah. And so I without, think, oh, sorry, but yeah. without names, obviously, Maddie, mm -hmm. just give us some example of some of the mental health issues that your friends are suffering um, with. Well, I know a few people with... Don't say anyone's name. No, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> I know a few people with schizophrenia. Um, two friends. Tourette's syndrome, uh, autism, uh, depression, bipolar. So I've got a real mixture of friends like that, but I don't really see them as that. I don't mm. see them as having those mental health issues. I just see them as my friends. And do you know um, what's really sad is that <laughs> some of the other children that Maddie knows will actually say to Maddie, but how can you be friends with somebody with those issues? That's and their ignorance, isn't it? It is, but I think that is the problem. I think often people's aren't, in, intention isn't, isn't wrong. And uh, Maddie said, didn't you, when you first, with one of your friends, when you found out they had schizophrenia, you were alarmed. Yeah. But she, as she said to me, I didn't show it, I just went out and found out about it. Yeah. So, and I think there's so much to learn from that, you know, because, I mean, even when Mark, um, you know, Dad spoke about his depression openly on, on YouTube, the amount of people that came up to me and went, oh, that was so brave. Oh, my God, are you all right? Are you all right? It's like, why? What, what, are you all going to change your yeah. opinions now of us? Because he doesn't have the face of someone that suffers with depression. Yeah. He, he's a very, you know, he's a very smart, funny, good-looking, you know, to all intents and purposes, looks fine. But he has times of terrible despair, as people yeah. do that suffer from depression. And we made the decision... And that was through professional advice as well, to be open with the girls about mm. it so that they weren't ever worried when Mark Well, thinking it was their fault, mm. maybe. Yeah. That... And but, Matt, Maddie, you're a teenager, obviously, and we're a load of old... <laughs> <laughs> um, so tell us, because so people, people will be watching this. It's half yeah. term, you know, their kids are at home. There will be people watching this who, who are worried about their yeah. children. Yeah. How, as parents, is it the best way to approach a problematic subject with a teenager? Well, it is really difficult for parents, I do think, because <laughs> um, one of my friends is 
uh, parents are extreme either way. They're either not asking them how they feel at all or they're overly asking them. And um, my friend doesn't like it either way. My, my, I think teenagers want it to be in between. I think we should be made to feel like we can come to our parents for advice, mm. but in our own time and we should come to them. I think it's normal to ask what's wrong, but uh, I think sometimes teenagers just find it overwhelming. But what, do you what think they want to we... talk to their parents, though, do they? I mean, they, well, they... What, we've, what we've done, because the thing is, when you're a parent of a teenager, and teenagers are having thousands of thoughts, mm. and they can change their face. Sometimes I look at Maddie and think, oh, my God, what's about to happen? She looks totally devastated. But she might be thinking of a tune or a party or whatever. And so we got to this place where she really did feel like I was asking her all the time. So, and, she, and like you said to me, didn't you, sometimes it's the worst thing when a parent looks at you and says, what's wrong? Talk to me. So we got this thing going where I say to her, just text me. Yeah. And if it's something you need my advice on, I'll advise you. If it's something you just want to tell me because you want to get it out, yeah. but you don't want me to go, right, what's the plan? How are we going to fix yeah. it? Because I think yeah. that's really, you said to me, that's really annoying for teenagers. <laughs> so you will sometimes text me. Quite often it's 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and, then, um, and then I'll wake up and think, oh, my God, she was upset at 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I didn't know. But I think sometimes you maybe choose that because you don't want me to... Well, it's a it. sideways conversation <laughs> rather sideways. than a front-on one. Another really good idea yeah. is to talk to your teenager while they're in the seat behind you when you're driving. Obviously, not me. Uh, when... no, that's terrifying. <laughs> yeah, no, no one would want to talk to you while because, you're driving. Because then it's, it's just that bit of distance. Because yeah. it's very awkward. A lot of what they're going through and they're struggling with. Yeah. And, you know, with Kiki, we make sure that she has her own time, her time that we talk about her worry, because she suffers yeah. with anxiety. This so is your set... younger daughter, yeah. for anyone who, so we who set... doesn't know. Yeah, we set aside time where she can talk about that. And but She must also talk to you, Maddie, because, yes. you know, big sisters, that's a very special role. Yeah, me and my little sister are really close, so she will come and tell me a lot of stuff that she probably wouldn't tell mum and dad that I, I would never and tell And I anyone. think that's really important, because I think a lot of parents feel other... They're not, they're not mentally equipped to deal with the, the consequences of the questions that they're asking, so that's yeah. why they don't ask the questions. Yeah. But if, if there's someone in your life, whether it is an auntie or, I don't know, a, another family member or a close friend, that I, I personally think that a teenager can talk to, again, in a more sideways manner and know that it will make its way back to mum and dad, and yeah. then you can have the conversation. Way. Does, that, <laughs> does that work? Yeah, definitely. OK. Yeah. Um, I just want to... We, we've actually been working with Loose Women with a charity called Young Minds, and um, they've helped us with this acronym. I think we've got it up on, on the screen there, Speak Out. So these are, this kind of gives you a little toolkit and some ideas on how maybe to communicate with your teen or with your child if you're having problems. Things like, you know, S, share your concerns with them. Um, uh, keep the conversation open. I think that's the most important one, time. isn't it? Being able to know, <laughs> as you said, Maddie, that you can talk to your parents Definitely. if you want to. And not yeah. to overreact. If they tell you something, don't overreact. I mean, Maddie and Kiki talk a lot to each other and sometimes I want to know what they've said. But I but think... But out. But yeah. out. Yeah. But out. It's yeah. there under you. Understand if they aren't ready to talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs>